Hi everyone, welcome, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Chloe Tapert Morrison. I use the pronoun she, her, and I'm a user experience designer, as well as a master's student at OCAD University's Inclusive Design Program. In this video, I will be sharing with you my multi-sensory interpretation of the Canadian painter Tom Thompson's painting, A Northern Lake. Through this presentation, I will be explaining how each area of sense is activated in this experience. I invite you to follow along in engaging your senses with the following materials. Soft, fluffy cotton balls for touch, pine needle tea for taste and smell, or other flavors and scents that remind you of the woods, and the video will incorporate the sight and sound elements. I would like to start this video with a land acknowledgement. I'm coming to you today from the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of Skugog Island First Nation, territory that is covered by the Williams Treaties. I acknowledge this land out of respect for the Indigenous nations that have cared for Turtle Island, also called North America, from before the arrival of settlers until this day. I acknowledge the history of these lands and the poor treatment and lack of friendship with the First Nations who called them home. Thank you. Before taking a look at the painting, I would like to give you a brief history of Tom Thompson's life. Thomas John Thompson was born August 5, 1877 in Claremont, Ontario. Though Thompson learned to draw and paint as a child, he did not start his painting career until later in life. After studying at the Canada Business College in Chatham and the Acme Business College in Seattle, Thompson began working with a commercial art company as an engraver and calligrapher. He had begun moving up in his career in Seattle, but upon a rejected marriage proposal, Thompson decided to move to Toronto and become an artist. Thompson was beginning his career at an amateur level and decided to enroll in night school at the Central Ontario School of Art and Industrial Design, which would later become the Ontario College of Art and Design University. During his studies, he began working with J.E.H. MacDonald at a well-known commercial art firm. In 1912, Thompson began going on camping trips to Lake Huron and Algonquin Park, where he would sketch the northern landscape and begin finding his style as an artist. Thompson would bring his sketches to the office to show MacDonald and other co-workers and get their opinions. MacDonald was a major influence on Thompson's crafted style through his own advice on Thompson's work, as well as introducing Thompson to works from artists such as John Constable. Thompson's painting method was to create quick, vibrant sketches of the landscape during his trips, and then would create larger, finished versions back in his studio. Thompson was known for his Art Nouveau and post-impressionist styles, using short, vigorous brushstrokes to create a sense of dynamic movement in his paintings. Thompson was known for his unique and experimental color palette and for using a vibrant layer of paint below the surface and allowing it to show through in key areas. Thompson would regularly camp and paint with his friends A.Y. Jackson, Arthur Lismer, and Frederick Varley. Thompson's style and influence of adapting and expressing the Canadian landscape would later be reflected in the Group of Seven's Canadian art movement that would begin soon after Thompson's death. At the age of 37, Thompson was living in Algonquin Park from spring to autumn, working as a guide and arranger when not painting. Then, he would move back to Toronto for the winter and would continue to work on large-scale paintings from his sketches. On July 8, 1917, at 39 years old, Tom Thompson embarked on his final trip out on Canoe Lake. Later that evening, his upturned canoe was found without Thompson inside. His body was found eight days later. Though there are plenty of theories as to what happened that day, Thompson's death was ruled to be an accidental drowning. His painting career was cut short after only five years, but his legacy as one of Canada's most influential painters of the early 20th century lives on. This slide depicts a professional portrait photo of Tom Thompson. The black and white photo is on a sepia colored paper and is quite faded. Thompson's upper body and head are facing at a 45 degree angle toward the right, and he is looking off into the distance with a neutral expression. Thompson is wearing what looks to be a dark colored pork pie style hat with a round brim, a dark suit and lapeled coat with a bow tie tied around his neck. His hair is slicked over to the left side of his head. Tom Thompson's A Northern Lake was painted in spring 1916. It is painted using oil on composite wood pulp board and measures 21.6 centimeters by 26.7 centimeters. This painting is currently at the Art Gallery of Ontario 
and was a gift from the Rubin and Kate Leonard Canadian Fund. The composition of this landscape painting is as though the viewer has stepped onto a rocky shoreline and is looking across the lake to dense rows of bare trees and a line of hazy rolling hills in the distance. The generously applied paint and expressive brushstrokes on the water suggest that there may have been a slight current that day. This is further shown through the rough, white ridges of the water coming up around the shore. At the base of the tree line, there is a shock of fiery orange as though the fallen leaves from the bare trees have thawed from the winter snow. The jagged, deep grey line of trees burst upward at varying heights across the entire painting. As the hills move further into the distance, they transition from deep, nearly black navy into a faded cerulean blue. The sky has soft hints of sunrise, starting at a blush pink at the center horizon of the painting, gradually fading into a dusky light blue at the top. There are hints of a vibrant coral underlayer that show throughout scattered sections of the painting. Tom Thompson painted this lake several times throughout his career, during different seasons and during different times of day. Though it was not specified which lake is portrayed in these paintings, experts, researchers, and admirers of Thompson's work have agreed that this is likely Smoke Lake in Algonquin Park. The main idea for this interpretation is for the visitor to feel as though they have been transported into the painting. The goal is for the visitor to have a fully immersive, inclusive, and multi-sensory experience that leaves them with a sense of wonder, a feeling of engagement, and a better ability to remember the experience of interacting with the installation. Though the painting has expressive brushstrokes, the soft palette and stillness of everything but the water portrays a sense of a calm, quiet moment in time. I developed this installation to allow for a person to take a moment to relax in quiet nature, even while indoors. To make this a fully immersive experience, all available or desired senses had to be activated for each visitor. Upon arriving at the installation, the visitor would be offered pine needle tea to activate their sense of taste and smell. Pine needle tea was selected for this because the flavor is not overbearing and mimics tasting pine in the air while in the woods. The smell is also strong enough that an individual can smell it in the air around their cup, but it is not too fragrant as to overwhelm other visitors who do not want to activate their sense of smell. Visitors will also be able to download an app and will be offered headphones if they choose to use the audio portion. The app contains the choice of adding audio information, visual information, or audio and visual information together. For the audio section, ambient sounds reflecting the natural elements of the painting will be played under a voiceover that explains further details of the room and the painting. Here is a short clip. Imagine fiery orange and red leaves crunching underfoot as you step into the room. Birds chirp faintly in the distance as though from high up in trees. There's a sound of soft water lapping at the shoreline ahead. The fresh and invigorating smell of pine is around you and on the tip of your tongue. In the sky is a soft sunrise transitioning from blush pink to a baby blue. You have now been transported into Tom Thompson's A Northern Lake. The text only option offers a written version of the expressive description of the room and the painting for visitors who would like to read further details without any audio. The audio and visual page uses both the written and audio descriptions for people who prefer to read along as they listen and have the added ambient cues. The purpose of using an app rather than speakers in the room is to allow for the audio to be an optional sense to avoid overstimulating others. The text option also allows for visitors to read more about the experience at their own pace without needing to crowd around a single wall. The app has been designed to have a simple and easily maneuvered interface that works with screen readers. The buttons are placed to be easily accessible and can be manipulated with the use of a single hand. When stepping into the room, the visitor is greeted by vibrant colors and textures starting from the entryway floor and leading up the wall toward the ceiling. The floor is covered in a carpet of leaves to mimic the shock of orange in the painting. The leaves are attached to one another and fastened to the floor so that motorized scooters, canes, and other devices will not be hindered. But this still allows for visitors' proprioception to acknowledge that they are on different terrain. 
Raised tactile marks on the floor can assist low vision and blind visitors to find their way across the room to the textured wall with the painting. The wall represents the tree line, the rolling hills, and the sky of the painting. Starting from the bottom where the floor meets the wall, the rough textured paper has been painted a soft, deep gray. The paper spans the entire width of the installation and has jagged sections shooting up to mimic the varied heights of the trees in the painting. The rough paper has been chosen to represent the feeling of tree bark. Moving up, there are five layered sheets that are painted to match the transitioning colors of the rolling hills from dark, nearly black navy blue to a faded cerulean blue. The hills transition to the sky at the one-third mark in order to ensure that both tactile areas can be reached by all visitors, regardless of height or ability. The sky in the painting seems thick and fluffy and the colors evoke the thought of cotton candy. With this cotton candy-like sky in mind, the sky was created from rolls of cottony fake snow that has been stretched and layered to visually and physically represent the feeling of a dense cloud. The material was then painted to match the colors by adding fabric paint and water to a spray bottle and misting the layers of the colors across the fabric. A rectangle in the middle of the sky was carved out to embed the painting into the installation. The painting would be protected by a glass panel above it so as not to be damaged by hands touching the walls around it. There are a few theories that went into developing this interpretation. The first theory is that an inclusive, multi-sensory, and accessible experience will benefit all visitors. Visitors will feel more engaged with the work, and the museum being less visually reliant will help it become a more inclusive space. The second theory is that memories created of an experience that engages multiple senses are stronger and longer lasting than memories of a single sensory experience. Even though you may be watching from home rather than visiting this installation yourself, if you have chosen to engage with the sensory objects outlined at the beginning of the video throughout the installation walkthrough, I hope that these will contribute to a longer lasting memory of Tom Thompson's A Northern Lake and this installation developed around it. To further illustrate the benefits and outcomes of this installation, I have worked with Bloom's Taxonomy to outline the ways that visitors will create, evaluate, analyze, apply, understand, and remember. Visitors will be able to create a memorable and engaging experience beyond the traditional gallery visits they may have had previously. Visitors will be able to evaluate how the multi-sensory elements help or hinder their experience of interacting with the artwork and their memory of the installation visit. Visitors can analyze the senses that they can or choose to interact with to learn more about how the sensory information interacts with the painting subject matter. Visitors will be able to apply the activated sensory information toward the visual or audio description of the painting and their memory of it later. Visitors will have a well-rounded understanding of the painting subject matter outside of just the visual description. And a visitor will theoretically be able to remember their experience of the installation with better detail and for a longer period of time. I have really enjoyed the process of developing this installation. It has helped me see art in a different light. I hope that this was able to inspire you to look at art differently, as well as participate in multisensory exhibitions in the future. I would like to thank my professor, Melissa Smith, for her ongoing support and advice throughout this project. I would like to thank all of the guest speakers who came to our class to share their knowledge and expertise with making from home, developing audio descriptions for our selected works of art, and how to engage the senses. I would also like to thank our low vision and blind guests who graciously lent their time every week to give us feedback on how to make our works more inclusive. On the screen, I have also included the sources that I consulted when developing this project and video. The works I consulted are as follows. The Algonquin Art Center's article, Tom Thompson Paintings Return to Algonquin Park, Art Canada Institute's articles titled Tom Thompson Biography and Tom Thompson Style and Technique, the PDF copy of The Multisensory Museum, the article, A Multisensory Perspective on Object Memory, the article, Welcoming Art Lovers with Disabilities, the Canadian Encyclopedia's entry on Tom Thompson, Ontario Tech University's brochure on A Guide to Acknowledging Traditional Territory, the article, Multisensory Met, Touch, Smell, and Hear Art, and the article, Touch, Smell, and Eat Your Art at Tate Britain's Sensorium. Lastly, 
I would like to thank the AGO for providing our class the platform to share our work. And I would like to thank you, who is watching or listening to this video, for taking a moment of your time to learn about my project. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day.